Hey guys, Cliff Olson, Doctor of Audiology and founder of Applied Hearing Solutions in Phoenix, Arizona. And in this video, I'm taking a look at new dementia research and why it could have huge implications for individuals with hearing loss. Coming up. The link between hearing loss and dementia is getting harder and harder to ignore. Just a simple Google search using these two terms will yield millions of results with many of the top results from reputable sources such as Johns Hopkins and the National Institutes of Health. However, some fear that the link between hearing loss and dementia may be completely misunderstood by the general public. In fact, in a February 2023 article published in the Journal of American Geriatrics Society, the authors speculate that the current messaging around hearing loss and dementia has potential to stigmatize and raise anxieties for people with hearing loss. And you know what? They're probably right, but it doesn't change the fact that you should at least be aware of the research that's coming out about this link, including a new study that was just published in January of 2024. But before I dive into this new research that is linking once again hearing loss and dementia, if you could do me a huge favor and click the like button, it really helps out the channel because it gets these videos in front of a bigger audience. And while you're at it, if you have not yet hit that subscribe button with notification bell, go ahead and do that as well because that ensures that you never miss one of my newly released videos and a huge shout out to Phonak for sponsoring today's video but more on them in a little bit. According to the National Institutes of Health, the prevalence for dementia in the United States is 6.7 million Americans above the age of 65. As for the prevalence of hearing loss in the United States, approximately a third of individuals between age 65 and 75 have hearing loss and half of individuals above the age of 75 have hearing loss. Both of these conditions are very prevalent, not just in the United States, but around the world as well. But how are they linked to each other? Well, in a 2011 study out of Johns Hopkins, researchers indicated that individuals with a mild hearing loss were two times more likely to develop dementia, individuals with moderate hearing loss were three times more likely, and individuals with severe hearing loss were five times more likely to develop dementia. This data attracted a lot of attention inside of the medical community, the audiology community, and the hearing loss community. The problems were we didn't know if this was correlation or causation, and on top of that, we had no idea if you were to treat your hearing loss with hearing aids, if that would reduce your risk. So for several years as hearing care professionals, we're basically like, yeah, there's a link, but we have no idea if we can do anything about it. But six years later, in July of 2017, the Lancet Commission identified hearing loss as the leading potentially modifiable risk factor for dementia later in life at 8% of all risk factors. However, this study still did not indicate whether or not treating your hearing loss with hearing aids would slow down your rate of cognitive decline and ultimately reduce the risk of dementia. But fast forward to 2023 when the results of the ACHIEVE study were finally released. This was the first ever study conducted to determine if treating your hearing loss with hearing aids would actually reduce your rate of cognitive decline versus not treating your hearing loss. What researchers found is that there was not a reduction in the rate of cognitive decline between the treatment group and the control group. However, they did identify that a subgroup of the treatment group who were at a higher risk of developing dementia actually saw a 48% reduction in their rate of cognitive decline over the course of three years. Finally, we had some answers as to whether or not treating your hearing loss with hearing aids would slow down your rate of cognitive decline, and the answer is yes in some people, but it is definitely not the silver bullet that we thought it would be. But remember that study I was telling you about earlier that was released in January of 2024? Yeah, that was called the Enhanced Study, and that paints a little bit different picture. This particular study had a 160 participant treatment group that did not have dementia, but did have hearing loss and they got treated for that hearing loss at that baseline hearing test. Their control group had 102 participants. They did not have dementia either, but they did not receive hearing treatment. Their results indicated that hearing aid users demonstrated significantly better cognitive performance three years post fitting. The researchers stated in the results that primary comparative analysis showed cognitive stability for the hearing aid group, while the AIBL group declined on working memory, visual attention, and psychomotor function. There was a non-significant trend for decline in visual learning for the AIBL group versus no decline for the hearing aid group. The hearing aid group showed significant decline on only one subtest and at a significantly slower rate than for the AIBL participants. 
So what does this all mean? Well, it basically means that there is now a growing body of evidence that suggests that treating your hearing loss with hearing aids can actually slow down your rate of cognitive decline and potentially reduce your risk of dementia later in life. It also means that if you have hearing loss, you should be treating your hearing loss with prescription hearing aids from companies like Phonak, today's video sponsor. Phonak offers a full portfolio of premium hearing aids for virtually every type of hearing loss. This portfolio includes their Lyric Extended Wear hearing aid, their Verto Custom line of hearing aids, the Audeo Receiver and Canal hearing aids, the Sky Pediatric hearing aids, and the Naida Behind the Ear hearing aids, as well as a full line of accessories including the Partner Mic, the TV Connector, and their Roger microphones. And these Phonak hearing aids have features that have been proven to reduce listening effort to support cognitive fitness. When your brain isn't having to constantly compensate for your lack of hearing, you can use your brain for other things like being part of the conversation instead of always being one step behind. Fun fact here is that Phonak actually provided the hearing aids for the Achieve study that I mentioned earlier. But Phonak also realizes that it's more than just the hearing aid technology. You have to have a hearing care professional who understands this link between hearing loss and dementia, which is exactly why they developed their ECHO program. The more that your hearing care professional understands this link between hearing loss and dementia, the better that they will be at educating you about this link. ECHO actually stands for Enhancing Cognitive Health with Hearing Optimization, and it aims to equip hearing care professionals with the resources to better integrate the topic of cognitive health into their discussions with patients. Providers who have been trained in ECHO will have a deeper understanding on the research explaining the relationship between hearing loss and cognition. This training will help them properly care for their patients by offering the best audiological solutions that will support cognitive health and well-being. Now, regardless whether or not treating your hearing loss with hearing aids will actually slow down your rate of cognitive decline, treating your hearing loss is always a good idea. When it comes to improving communication, reducing social isolation and dementia, or reducing your risk of falling, treating your hearing loss can significantly improve your quality of life. And if you happen to be an individual who slows down your rate of cognitive decline and potentially reduces your risk of dementia later in life, that will be icing on the cake. So if you have hearing loss and hearing aids are the most appropriate treatment option, as long as those hearing aids are fit and programmed by a hearing care professional who follows comprehensive audiologic best practices, it could be the best decision that you ever make.